Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Shayna and this YouTube channel is all about my life up in Northern Saskatchewan, homesteading uh, on a small urban homestead and hunting, fishing, and all the other outdoor activities. So in today's video, when you guys are watching this, I will actually be down south on a mule deer hunt. I did get drawn for some mule deer tags, um, so we're really looking forward to that. But because we are leaving on Friday of this week or Friday the week before this video comes out, um, we need to kind of do two things to get ready. So first we need to use up a whole bunch of stuff that will go bad while we are gone because we don't want to waste anything. And secondly, we need to prepare some food to take with us to help keep travel costs down because it's about a 20 hour drive all said and done from where we live in the north end of the province to where we are hunting in the south end of the province. Um, so obviously that trip costs a lot of money when it comes to gas. So we do try to keep the cost down by bringing as much food as possible that we make at home, buying groceries as opposed to eating out um, and staying with people that we know where possible instead of doing hotels. But anyways, today is all about getting food ready and using food up. And so the most efficient way to do that is use up the food that we have to make for the trip. So I have a list of things that I wanna get done in the kitchen today. Uh, everything is starting out nice and clean, which is why I felt like pulling the video camera out to film this anyways. I thought I'm gonna be spending probably the entire afternoon in the kitchen um, and why not take you guys along with it. So for things we wanna get done today. Uh, the grocery store I went this morning had a massive sale on avocados. Um, so normally it's about $4 an avocado up here at our grocery store, but they brought in way too many and so they had a huge sale. So I got what would have been $39 Canadian of avocados for $10. So, um, but they don't keep if they're just gonna sit on the shelf because most of these are approaching ripe already so we're gonna freeze them because you can freeze avocado so we're gonna prep all the avocado to go in the freezer for storage and then I have some bananas here that desperately need to be made into something so we're gonna do banana bread muffins because those will be really easy to take um, when we're hunting typically you don't want to bring anything that is uh, requires like being heated up is relatively easy to pack it doesn't matter if it gets smushed a little bit um, in a pack and is also relatively quiet to eat because you don't want to be crunching on chips uh, when you're trying to sneak up on a deer so we've got avocados we've got banana bread um, I want to make sugar cookies because it's coming up on Halloween season and for some reason I never think to make sugar cookies unless it's like Halloween Christmas or Easter um, but looking forward to those we haven't had them in a really long time and they are easy to bring along for snacks as well and then bread um, I have my sourdough starter in the window um, it has been fed I forgot to feed it yesterday but that's okay it'll still work um, and we are going to make a kind of hybrid sourdough regular yeast uh, sandwich loaf and so it's kind of a hybrid because it has the fermentation of the sourdough, but it doesn't have the rise time of like the 12 to 24 hour period. I do like a quick rise sourdough, um, only about five, six hours. Um, so that's a big list of stuff to do. Um, and then tonight also, um, last week's video was hunting the sage grouse, or not sage grouse, oh my gosh, those are endangered. We did not hunt sage grouse, we hunted spruce grouse. <laughs> Um, and so tonight we are cooking up the spruce grouse and we are going to do spruce grouse and rough grouse tacos. Um, so I'm hoping to film that as well. I'm a biologist. I can't believe I just mixed up spruce grouse and sage grouse. Um, if you guys don't know about sage grouse though, go look them up. They're super cool uh, native birds in the grasslands, which they are found around where we're hunting down south, or at least they used to be. So that's probably why it's in my brain. Anyways, <laughs> all that aside, let's get started. All right, so the very first thing I want to do, I want to factor in time. And because this bread is going to rise for five to six hours, it's about one o'clock right now. 
Um, I'm hoping to bake it kind of right before or right after supper, uh, which is usually between five and six. So we want to get this mixed up so it can sit and rise for the rest of the afternoon while we're doing everything else. Um, so for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two tablespoons of brown sugar. If I can find my scoop here. Um, this just has to be a sugar. Um, you can swap this for white sugar. You can swap this for honey, um, whatever your preference is. Um, I think the honey would be really, really good for bread too, especially if you're doing like a sandwich loaf or if you're gonna put like oat or anything in it. Um, but I just usually use either brown or white sugar just because it's what we most commonly have on hand. And then you're gonna add uh, two cups of lukewarm water. So you don't want it to be crazy hot because that will hurt the yeast, um, but you want it to be warm so that it'll melt the sugar and encourage the bread to rise. So I'm gonna grab that really quick at the sink. All right, so we're gonna add the water in and make sure that we are stirring it up, getting that sugar to dissolve. Next, I'm gonna add my sourdough starter. Um, you can add sourdough starter in place of like flour in any kind of equal proportion. Um, so I'm gonna scrape a whole bunch of this out, but I want to leave enough that there will still be some sourdough in the bottom to continue um, my culture. So I'm basically just gonna pour the majority of this in. right like that so I still have some in the bottom there so I'm gonna use that to create more so I'm just gonna put a quarter cup flour and a quarter cup water in here stir this up and put it back in the fridge and then because this is a more quick rise method I am still gonna add um, active like quick rise yeast. Um, I buy the big bulk packs from Costco and then I just kept one of these little jars to only take some out of the fridge at a time so that it lasts longer. Um, but I have used this brand of uh, yeast as well. So we're just gonna do like probably like a teaspoon um, if you wanted it to rise more or faster you could use more of this um, or if you want to use more sourdough you could put less. This isn't a recipe like this is based off of two different recipes that I kind of just combined together and it seems to work. Okay we're gonna give this a mix as well. Next we're gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. I, once again, don't actually measure this out. Kind of just about that much. And then now we are going to add four to five cups of flour, depending on how liquidy everything is looking, so. I usually start with three and then mix it up. Um, the other thing is that this isn't gonna be um, a kneading type bread. Like you're gonna leave it kind of a sticky dough consistency. It's gonna be a little bit wetter than what you'd be used to with like a regular sandwich loaf, I guess. Um, and then it also doesn't quite have like all the stretching and folding that is required for a traditional sourdough loaf. So I like this because you get a little bit of that sourdough flavor, nothing too crazy strong, um, but with the kind of easiness of a regular sour, uh, sandwich bread loaf. So that is still definitely too liquidy. So we're gonna add another cup of flour. I use cup liberally. If there's any extra flour, it'll just get worked in as it's rising. So that's looking a lot better. It's coming together as a single kind of dough ball, but it is still kind of sticky. I think I want just a bit more, so I'm gonna do like four and a half. I 
can never actually see the back of the camera when I'm doing this, so hopefully I'm not moving it completely out of frame, but if I did, oops. Okay, there we go. This is looking a lot better. So once we have our dough like that, just kind of make sure it's somewhat in a round shape. Uh, and then this just sits for five to six hours. It's super, super easy, super simple. Um, and you get a little bit of that sourdough flavor and benefits, um, but without it being too crazy overpowering. So if you're a person who has wanted to do sourdough, um, but the sour taste is too much, maybe try this instead. But we are just gonna set this on the counter. You don't have to worry about putting it somewhere warm because it's such a long rise time that you can just let it do its thing. All right, so next we are going to prep the avocados. Um, I've read that you can do freeze them like with skins off whole, um, halves, chopped, mashed, um, kind of any which way. Um, I think I'm going to freeze them in halves. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them in half, remove the pit, and then try to scoop each half out in one piece, hopefully. And then I'm going to plastic wrap each half put it into a freezer bag and try freezing it that way. I do think long-term storage, you would probably want to vacuum seal these. We do have a vacuum sealer. Um, we've kind of already got it um, stashed away for this hunting trip though, so I'm not gonna bother pulling it out. We'll try this for now, and if they aren't lasting, then we will definitely vacuum seal them next time. So I've got my knife here, and I'm just going to cut all the way around twist it open and pop the pit out. There we go. Um, I have not tried doing this before. This is new to me, so I will definitely let you guys know in the comments of this video if it like didn't work or if there's a different way that I would suggest doing it. But we do like avocado and guac and... And I should remember, I do want to keep half of one out for the tacos tonight before I get too caught up in what I'm doing. So I'm gonna cut this one open. And then I'm gonna wrap this one and stick it in the fridge. We'll save this one for tacos tonight. All right, it turns out you don't even actually to have to actually take the skins off, um, which is perfect. It does say that if you want to prevent discoloration, you can sprinkle some lemon juice. I have a lime, so I'm just gonna kind of go along and put a little bit over each one just to help a little bit with that. I think that's all of them now and so we're just going to go through and wrap each one and start putting them into the freezer bag. Uh, you also definitely can use any eco-friendly alternative to cling wrap um, like beeswax would work really great for this beeswax cloth. Um, I am tr slowly trying to transition some things over into eco-friendly when I was in Saskatoon uh, a couple weeks ago now, I guess, um, I got reusable paper towels, um, which is super cool. If you guys haven't heard of them, you can look into them. They roll up on a paper towel roll, just like disposable paper towel, except they are reusable and have, um, they're basically just like cloths with cute patterns. So I'm just going to keep going through until all of these are done.
Okay, that is all of our avocado in the bag. Um, if I was going to do anything super long-term storage with this, I would probably either use a straw to take the air out of the corner, um, or like I said earlier, vacuum seal them um, for longer-term storage. But I, we eat avocado quite a bit, so I am not too worried about how they are right now. If I start to see any problems with like freezer burn or anything, I might change up this setting. Um, but yeah, so first time freezing avocados, they were on over 70% off and it's very hard to turn up a good deal when it's local to me. So we're going to stick this in the freezer and move on to the next thing. All right, next up is sugar cookies. And this is actually my grandma Hamilton's recipe. Um, so we are going to be following it today. So we are going to put a cup of sugar cup of margarine and two eggs and yes I am still using store-bought eggs because even though my chickens are already 20 weeks old I still haven't got the first egg yet so um still waiting on that one hopefully by the time the next video comes out which will be like over two weeks from now um we will finally have some of our own eggs but in the meantime we're gonna do two eggs Maybe for Christmas cookies, we'll have farm eggs. Um, and if you guys don't already, you can just let these dry on the countertop and then crush them up and you can give them back to your chickens for calcium. You can add them to your garden for calcium. Um, they do take at least a year to break down into the soil. So if you put them in now, it will be not next year, but the year after's garden that benefits. Um, obviously, if you compost, you can compost them. Um, but yeah, you don't have to throw these out. They have a lot of uses. margarine. I'm sure you could swap this for butter if you have it. Um, we do tend to keep margarine on hand just because it's easy to buy the big bulk tubs um, and we can't always bring up or have storage I guess for the quantity of butter that we would likely go through. Maybe one day I would like to get there um, just because I prefer finding animal products as opposed to oil-based products. Um, but I also am realistic with myself in the fact that I would not be able to make a bunch of things if I only kept butter in the house. And it's also just a lot more expensive up here to try to get butter. So for the meantime, we do still use margarine. Also, I don't think I mentioned, um, the reason that I'm starting the sugar cookies first is that you want to give the dough some time to cool in the fridge before you start rolling it out to make the actual cookies. Um, so my plan is we have our bread rising. I'm going to make up this cookie dough and then let it chill while I'm making the banana bread muffins. And then the banana bread muffins can go in the oven we can roll out the sugar cookies and cut the shapes. By the time we're done that, we'll have the banana bread out of the oven, put the sugar cookies in, and then by the time that's done, I'm hoping it'll be about time to make supper, and then once supper's made, we'll put the bread in. So it's a whole process, it's a whole afternoon of stuff. So I'll probably have a lot of sped up sections in this video, otherwise it's gonna be like three hours long and I don't think anybody wants to watch that. It doesn't take long for my hair to go up when I'm in the kitchen. Um, so I'm just using this mixer that I'm pretty sure was my grandma Miller's. 
Um, I did have a KitchenAid stand mixer. It was actually a vintage one from the 1950s, um, but I broke the glass bowl. And so I haven't been able to find a replacement yet because they don't make them anymore. So in the meantime, I have been hand mixing everything, um, but I have been researching into other stand mixer models. So if you guys have a stand mixer in terms of KitchenAid, Cuisinart, obviously KitchenAids are super popular, um, but I have heard that it's hard to get parts for them in terms of fixing them. Definitely let me know your recommendations down in the comments below. And I'm just gonna basically beat all this together. Okay, so next up, we are going to add in our teaspoon of baking soda, mixed in a quarter cup of hot water, our one teaspoon of cream of tartar, and then a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, so we have our baking soda. We're gonna take one teaspoon into Quarter cup of warm water, stir it up so it's dissolved, and then we're gonna pour that in our bowl. If I was smart, I would have done the cream of tartar first because now this is wet. We'll dry it quick, and then cream of tartar, one teaspoon into the bowl. And vanilla. It says one teaspoon. I am a firm believer you measure vanilla and chocolate chips with your heart. So just do a splash of that. All right, so we are going to mix this up quick and then we're gonna be adding in the flour. quick just mix that in and then we're gonna add a cup of flour at a time and just kind of slowly incorporate so the recipe calls for about four cups and if you want to make your batter really thin I picked up a flour sifter um, from HomeSense which is also where I got the reusable paper towels um, so <laughs> I've had a couple complaints from my partner about there being a flour chunk in either a piece of bread or a cookie. So we got a flour sifter. And if you haven't seen one work, I'm sure most of you have, you pour the flour in and you just sift it through and it'll break up any big chunks. There are a couple little flower chunkies in there, but that's okay. So we're gonna beat this in and then we're gonna repeat it three more times.
And so at this stage, when it's getting quite thick, but there's still some flour to incorporate, I'm kind of scooping it over and then pressing it in to try to help incorporate that flour. But there we have our dough. I'm gonna to try to get a little bit of the dough off of the beaters yet. And then we are going to put this in the fridge to chill. All right, I got a little bit sidetracked. So <laughs> we are running a little bit behind now, but now it is time to make the banana bread. And I just realized that the recipe I have calls for like three or four bananas. I only have two, so. I think we're just going to go a little bit later on some of the dry ingredients and hopefully um, that will be enough. Um, so what we're going to need is half a cup of margarine, a cup of sugar, two eggs, baking powder, baking soda, a cup and a three quarters of flour is what the recipe calls for for three to four mashed bananas. So I think I'm going to try do a cup and a quarter and see how the consistency looks. Um, and then some salt and chocolate chips. So we are going to preheat the oven to 350. Just gonna get that going right now, make sure there's nothing in it. And next we're gonna get everything into our bowl and assembled. So just a quick little bread update. We are still slowly rising. Um, it's not quite doubled in size yet, but we want it to get probably like up to like here before we bake it. All right, so we have our batter all made up. I did end up using a cup and a half of flour just for the two bananas, just because I felt like a cup and a quarter was a little bit too uh, liquidy still. And then it says to use a greased pan, but I'm actually gonna try these reusable silicone um, muffin liners. So they are an alternative to just the aluminum ones or the paper ones, and they are reusable and washable. So we are just going to get these into our muffin tray and it the original recipe is for a loaf of bread the biggest difference is we're probably not gonna have to cook it for as long so I'm gonna set a timer to check on these in half an hour um, and hopefully that will have been enough time I'm just gonna get a different spoon here And then basically you're just going to want to check on them if you're doing the muffin version that you don't undercook them or overcook them. Um, just use your toothpick to see if anything is sticking.
because I have a little bit more, I am just gonna use up some of the paper liners that I already have for the extra. We have our muffins, so now they're gonna go in the oven. We're gonna start with 30 minutes and check on them and then we'll see how they're doing. They might have to go for 45 though. So while those are in the oven, I'm gonna take this opportunity to get caught up on a, some of the dishes that I have created. And then I will be back to roll out the sugar cookies, take the muffins out of the oven and then probably get started on the spruce grouse and rough grouse tacos. All right, well, 30 minutes was almost too long. Those are well done muffins. They're not burnt, but they're well done. So we have those out of the oven now and cooling. And now we can prepare for the sugar cookies. I have the dough out on some flour here and we are gonna cook these at 350 for eight minutes. Um, but we're going to roll out the dough uh, to our thickness, cut with cookie cutters, and then place on a floured cookie sheet, not a greased one. Alright, now it is time to roll this out. whole box of fun cookie cutters but I think since we're going deer hunting we have to do the deer right and maybe some trees I do also have this really cute moose one but we're not moose hunting so we'll save that one for next year this dough is a little soft to start off with. I probably could have incorporated a bit more flour before leaving it to cool. However, as we continue to roll this out, more and more flour will get worked in. So I'm not too worried about it.
All right, we have our first two trays of cookies ready. We're gonna toss them into the oven. Well, of course I picked a pan size that was too big, so we're only gonna do one at a time. That's okay though. Let's go for eight minutes while we get our next ones cut out. All right, the timer just went off. The first batch of cookies is done. We've got the rest of the cookie dough cut up, plus the kind of leftover bonus that just gets to be an ugly cookie. And we're gonna take these ones off to cool while these ones are cooking, and then reuse that tray to put these ones on. All right, you guys, it is almost six o'clock and I'm not gonna lie, I'm running out of steam when it comes to filming. Um, I've had to charge my phone twice. Um, yeah, but anyways, we are almost done with the day. We are gonna get started prepping our grouse um, for the tacos, um, topping up our guacamole mixture, and then finally putting the bread in the oven and then I'm going to be done. Our cookies and our muffins are baked and so now we are in the final stretch. So um, to start, I have a little bit of guac left over that I had made to put on some toast this morning. So we are gonna use the half an avocado that we saved earlier just to make a little bit more for the tacos. We have our grouse. We're gonna cut that up and get that cooking and then basically just assemble the tacos with some soft tortilla shells, some salsa, some cheese, and whatever other toppings. Uh, my partner likes to put tomatoes on his, I don't. Um, but yeah, so we are going to get rolling. So starting with the guac. As you can see, I do already have some made. It's fairly straightforward, but you're gonna take your avocado get that out of there don't want that and then to the avocado we're going to add some garlic seasoning you can also just use minced garlic bit of seasoning salt or just regular salt, some black pepper, and then just a little bit of cayenne pepper. And then to that you are also going to add some lime juice. So the lime from earlier And then you basically just mash it all together. That's all I really do. You can add tomatoes or onions or whatever else you want in, make it your own. But I just like it. Just lime, guac, and, or avocado, and some seasoning. Just like that. So we're gonna set this aside and move on to getting our grouse ready. Just gonna grab a cutting board over here. All right. So we're gonna take each of these breasts out. And all I'm doing is dicing them into cubes. And they don't have to all be the same size.
all of our diced meat. We're gonna move over here to our pan and get this margarine heating up. You could also use butter. So I like to keep this really simple and just sprinkle some salt and pepper over the grouse. And the key with this is to not overcook it. So you're gonna let the pan heat up, let some of this margarine melt, and just fry it. The pieces are brown, but they're not overcooked, so I'm going to take this off the heat and let it sit while we prep the rest of our taco ingredients. Alright, so to assemble a taco, I'm going to take some guac. Jalapenos from the garden, and some lettuce. And there we have it, spruce gross tacos. All right, and now lastly, we have our bread. It has risen up quite a bit, so I'm going to grief this loaf pan, put this into the pan, and get it in the oven at 400 Fahrenheit.
All right, our timer went off and our bread is ready. So now we'll let this cool and we'll be able to take this for sandwiches in the field when we're on our hunting trip. All right, you guys, that is everything for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.